But I was going to ask, did the idea of original sin uh, have a lot to do with the idea of eternal damnation? Uh, 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 it definitely came to, especially in the Western synthesis, because you came with this notion, it came with the notion that somehow, uh, I mean, the very term original sin is problematic. In the East, the tradition was simply to say that we were born enslaved. All the legal language that Paul uses is civil language regarding slaves and their, and buying them out of slavery. The things that we often see translated as ransom, for instance, mm-hmm. litron, just really means the manumission fee for setting slaves free who, who are laboring under a cruel master or, or prisoners in the, in the house of death. Um, but in the West, especially, it started to become uh, and became absolutely firmly fixed in the Western understanding of Christianity. It came to be dogma that human beings are born uh, guilty of something because they had mm-hmm. in, inherited a culpability. I mean, obviously, a contradiction in terms just in, in, according to logic, the notion that you can inherit a culpability means nothing other than somebody is attributing a culpability to you that you yourself did nothing to contract. If there were such a thing, it would just be, you know, the ultimate cosmic injustice. But that therefore, everyone is actually born already meriting eternal suffering. It's one of the most colossally perverse ideas ever to arise in the human ima- uh, religious imagination. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned this idea that the language of kind of ransom, the, the, the language of, um, I'm not sure what the word I'm looking for is, but the language of uh, kind of um, paying off some debt as a, as, as the path to salvation, right? And, and, yeah. I, I, and, and, and I, if you flesh that out, I gather, the idea is that Jesus' death is what paid off that debt, I, it, it, and I, I kind of thought that was part of it, again, Paul's theology. But go not ahead. Really, not, not really. No. I mean, no. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's not a whole lot of talk about debt uh, in that sense. And Paul, again, he uses the language of civil law as a metaphor, which is simply what did it cost to set the prisoners free? Mm-hmm. What was the manumission fee? That's all he's asking. He's, there's no indebtedness to okay. God that Christ pays, according to Paul. The, the Really, the earliest understanding of salvation was a much more linear sort of t- tale of the divine hero, so to speak. It was here, you know, the cosmos had fallen uh, in bondage to death. God entered into the condition of estrangement, and, and that's the language Paul uses. It's all of triumph and overthrow and victory. Death is overthrown. The powers below mm-hmm. the earth are the powers on high, principalities, powers, dominions, thrones. These are the names of angelic orders of gods or, you know, angels of the nations. For him. He's mm-hmm. very much a man of the cosmology of that time. And for basic, basically what salvation is, is the, is rescuing an entire cosmos that has, that has, uh, fallen into bondage to death. It's, it has a very this, this the uh, fiduciary the uh, the economics of you know paying off an angry god with the blood of an innocent victim is again a later development, principally in the West, and another of the rather barbaric notions that, that kind of got entangled with Christian belief. 